The vast majority of state-of-the-art robo-picking solutions are characterized by slow and rigid movements. This is in stark contrast to how humans do the picking task, which is very fluid, fast, and often involves tossing things around. Can our robots do the same? In this work, we are interested in enabling robots to throw objects to improve both speed and reachability. The task is to grasp arbitrary objects from a cluttered bin and place them into selected boxes located outside the maximum reach of the robot. Here is a demonstration of our system in action. It learns to grasp objects and then toss them into each box one by one. Using overhead cameras to track where the object lands, our system learns from experience and improves itself over time through trial and error. We call our system TossingBot. And while state-of-the-art systems achieve speeds of 200 to 300 mean picks per hour, we achieve more than 500. Throwing is hard because it depends on many factors. For example, pre-throw conditions, like how you picked it up, can change the projectile trajectory of an object. If you grasp a screwdriver by the handle near the center of mass and throw it, it would land closer than if you had grasped it from the metal shaft, which would swing forward and land much further. Grasping is traditionally studied in isolation. How it relates to throwing remains an open-ended question. Other factors include varying contact and aerodynamics. For example, a ping pong ball would land even closer due to air resistance. Modeling all of these factors for arbitrary objects is hard. Hence, prior work on throwing robots are often confined to very simple objects like balls or darts, which are manually reset in the gripper before each throw. To address these challenges, we present two key ideas. The first is that how to grasp the object and how to throw it are two tightly intertwined problems that should be learned jointly. This enables our system to acquire its own pre-throw conditions by learning how to execute stable grasp that lead to predictable throws. The second idea is to leverage both physics and deep learning to develop a hybrid controller for throwing that handles varying dynamics. Specifically, we use a physics-based controller to estimate an initial throwing release velocity, then use a deep network to predict a data-driven residual. The sum of the two estimates returns the final throwing release velocity for a motion primitive. The initial estimates from physics generalize well to new target landing locations, while the data-driven residual focuses on learning to compensate for object-centric properties and dynamics. This combined formulation, which we call residual physics, gives us a controller with the best of both worlds. Using a 3D camera, we capture RGBD images to generate a height map view of the scene, which is fed into a perception network that computes intermediate pixel-wise features. In parallel, the 3D position of the selected target location is fed into a physics module, which uses the ballistic equations of projectile motion to provide an initial estimate of the throwing velocity. This estimate is concatenated with the features, then fed into a grasping network which outputs a dense prediction of pixel-wise confidence scores for grasping success, where each pixel represents a horizontal grasp centered at that location. The intermediate features are also fed into a throwing network, which outputs a dense prediction of residual velocity values that are added to the initial estimate from physics in order to get the final predictions of throwing velocities, where each pixel prediction corresponds to a sampled grasp. This process is repeated for 16 rotations of the height map in order to account for 16 different grasping angles. The final output consists of all the grasping confidence scores and the corresponding throwing velocities for a dense sampling of top-down grasps over the scene. The grasp with the highest confidence score and its respective throwing velocity is executed on the robot with predefined motion primitives. An overhead camera tracks the landing locations of objects for supervision. For best performance, grasps are supervised by whether subsequent throws made it into the correct box. At the start of training with randomly initialized weights, the robot performs poorly as it repeatedly attempts bad grasps. But over time, it learns to grasp objects and simultaneously improves its ability to throw. By 10,000 training steps, it is capable of achieving throwing accuracies of 85% with a grasping reliability of 
The robot also resets its own training so that human intervention is kept at a minimum. During the training process, the robot also has a random chance to explore what happens if it throws an object at a velocity it hasn't tried before. Our policies are capable of generalizing to new objects. For example, after training on objects with primitive shapes like wooden blocks, balls, and markers, our policies can perform reasonably on new objects such as fake fruit, decorative items, and office objects. On new objects, these policies start out with lower performance, but they can quickly adapt within a few hundred training steps to achieve similar performance as with the training objects. In general, we find that our method of residual physics is able to outperform several baseline alternatives, and surprisingly, seems to outperform the average untrained human on the same task in place of the robot. We also test our policies on their ability to generalize to new target locations unseen in training. To this end, we train on a subset of boxes, then test on another subset of boxes where the landing areas don't overlap. Particularly in this setting, we find that learning residuals on top of physics for throwing helps significantly. We test this more extensively in simulation. So what does TossingBot learn? To explore this question, we extract the intermediate pixel-wise features from the neural network. We place several objects in the bin and construct a height map which we feed into the network. We select a query pixel on a ping pong ball and extract its feature vector. Then visualize its distance to all other pixel-wise features, where hotter regions indicate more similar pixels in feature space. Immediately, the visualization seems to localize all other ping pong balls in the scene. And even though the orange block shares a similar color, its features are a lot more different. In a similar fashion, we select a query pixel on a pink highlighter and visualize the most similar pixels in feature space. Once again, the visualization localizes all other highlighters and expo arrays markers, which share similar shapes and mass, but do not share color textures. These observations suggest that TossingBot likely learns to rely more on geometric cues, such as shape, to learn grasping and throwing. It is also possible that the learned features reflect second-order attributes such as physical properties, which can influence how the objects should be thrown. These emerging features were learned implicitly from scratch without any explicit supervision. We also provide analysis in simulation with a set of training and testing objects. For example, we can visualize a 2D histogram of executed grasps directly on the objects, where darker blue regions indicate more grasps. Here, we compare what happens when we change grasp supervision from checking gripper width to checking whether the throw was accurate. The visualizations show that by using throws to supervise grasps, we get a smaller and more stable set of grasps. For more details, please check out our technical report. Thank you for watching.